Okay, before we begin, let's mention that there are spoilers in this video, so if you've not watched the last episode of The Mandalorian yet, please do so, and then uh, we'll give you our reaction to it after this. Hello out there, I'm the oldest nerd, and it's no surprise that this guy here saves the day. Uh, however, uh, it was a good ensemble in all of this. Now, there are a number of things that we expected that were wrong. There are a number of things that I kind of wished wouldn't happen and didn't happen. And uh, some good things that happened I wouldn't have expected. First of all, the things that didn't happen. Uh, one thing we found out was Gideon was not trying to raise a new emperor. He was trying to make clones of himself and create an unstoppable army. Uh, give himself with all his talents, uh, uh, clad them in Beskar, and then uh, imbue them with the Force. And that way it would be unstoppable. The latter part, I don't know exactly how you do that. Uh, if you get a bottle of Metachlorian or something and just, you know, give everybody a drink, I don't know how that works. Uh, however it is, that was his plan and uh, that was foiled, presumably. Now, this was only on the base on Mandalore. It doesn't mean that he didn't have other clones on his ship or uh, in other places, uh, perhaps in uh, uh, in Coruscant. So uh, we're, uh, we're not absolutely certain that there are not more clones of Moff Gideon, um, it is he's, he's too an too good an actor, I would say uh, that uh, uh, Juan Carlo Esposito would uh, not uh, appear in another season of Mandalorian. He makes too good of a bad guy. Uh, so my guess is, despite the fact that we saw him die, did you really? Uh, we saw him engulfed in flames, but uh, there is a way that uh, if you don't see the body, that it's not necessarily. Uh, means that he's gone. And uh, my guess is that he'll be back. Uh, we didn't see anything from the armor. We didn't uh, believe that she was all on the up and up and would reveal herself to be in cahoots with Gideon, perhaps uh, having uh, led them all to his base for the ambush. But uh, if she did or if she didn't, that was not revealed here. Uh, she only went back to her uh, duties of um, basically baptizing people in the Mandalorian waters uh, and uh, changing the um, apprentices uh, in into uh, full members of the Children of the Watch. However, uh, when Mando presents Grogu, the armorer says, well, uh, he can't say the words, so uh, without that, he can't do this. And uh, he would still be a foundling. And Din Djarin said, well, uh, uh, he can be my ward. And she says, uh, um, okay, so from now on, uh, you will be Din Grogu. And so now, uh, as father and son... We have uh, the Mandalorian and, and the kid traveling together, presumably Grogu being taught how to go about the ways of the Mandalorians and uh, bounty hunting and things like that. But what it does is provide a good reset. The reset is that now we can go back to Mando and Grogu and whatever adventures they have together and different places, different guest stars, instead of having this huge ensemble. I have a feeling that we will see more of um, Bo-Katan later on. She had a very good uh, bit with the Darksaber in this episode, and I won't rule out that the Darksaber is not to be seen again. Somehow something that important uh, wouldn't have been utterly destroyed but uh, mangled and uh, I have a feeling that uh, it can be repaired and we'll probably see some kind of episode sometime next season to where you know the armor perhaps is is banging it back into shape. Then uh, we have the um, uh, Navarro where um, 
Mando returns and uh, he claims his land that was promised to him and as an added bonus uh, he is able to uh, get the um, technicians to actually fix IG-11 back to his original state which is to say uh, as a, a helpful droid rather than a battle droid and uh, he is presented as the new marshal and uh, up to the uh, uh, all to the delight of the people there. So that is um, a nice thing. So now we have IG-11 back where he ought to be. We have Mando, his little cabin on the prairie, and Grogu doing force magic with frogs, and we leave it that way. Uh, all to be going back to what we really liked about the Mandalorian to begin with. He and the kid going from town to town. I rather like that. So, uh, and it leaves just about everything else open, and, and that's also good for a continuing story. They've said that they're going to go in multiple seasons, so uh, without getting too much into a single adventure, like what they're going to do with Mandalore now that they're back, are they going to colonize? I mean, it's, it's not going to be quite as exciting going forward as it was to this point. So it might be a good thing to stop back on and look at, but uh, as for adventures, uh, we need to go back to the original way that Mando was done. So that looks like what they're doing, and I have to say that they did it very well. The battle scenes were great. Uh, the crashing of the capital ship was also very well done. The fight scenes were well choreographed. Uh, there seemed to be thousands of people in there when sometimes it looked like, you know, there's four people fighting each other and, you know, where's everybody else? This, this worked out real well, and uh, I have to say that uh, it was a, a very satisfying episode. So I'd like to know what you think about it. Please put it in the comments below. And of course, subscribe if you have not done so. Uh, we are uh, out of Mandalorians right now, but uh, we'll take a look at what the next Star Wars series is going to be and maybe review that. We're certainly doing retro reviews of Doctor Who and Star Trek, the original series. Uh, we are going to... Uh, next month, uh, we'll be uh, picking up uh, Strange New Worlds and um, who knows what else. So... Uh, keep a watch on this channel, and uh, we'll keep videos coming your way. And until next time, don't go far. And may the Force be with you.